Here's a, 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 a recap of things that you already know and a look ahead at some other energies. You already know energy systems are over here on the right. You already know that thermal energy changes are, are indicated, are signified by uh, temperature changes. Bond energy changes are indicated by phase changes, changes in number of bonds. This is something that you can look at. Phase changes or chemistry. If, if you start out with one set of, of compounds and you end up with another set of compounds with the, all the same set of atoms, then there was some sort of chemical change and chemical changes all involve bond energy changes, chemical bond energies. I already mentioned that kinetic energy is determined by the speed of an object. Really specifically, kinetic energy is one half the mass times the speed squared. I'll write that down again in a, actually it'll be on a slide later. Depends on the speed. If I double the speed, the kinetic energy goes up by a factor of four. Funny thing is there's the mass in this and so you, you might wonder sometimes uh, what if the mass of something changes? Has the kinetic energy changed? And my answer is always going to be <laughs> um, we want to think of a single physical system. If the mass of this thing changes because I cut off half of it and throw it away, then I have changed my physical system. When the mass of something changes, the physical system itself has changed. If the physical system is changing, then we're not talking about two things and so we're, we don't want to talk about inner changes in energy that way. You can always change the energy by changing the physical system. That is not a useful way to do it. So the mass will never change. It'll always be the same mass of some object. Here's an object that's moving slowly. There's an object that's moving faster. It has kinetic energy when it's moving faster. The only thing that changes that's important is the speed. The mass didn't change just because I threw it. Uh, and, and we will always, at this point I should say, we will always ignore Einstein's theory of relativity because it's never relevant for us so I'm not going to worry about any kind of any other kinds of mass changes. This is the the kinetic energy and if it changes it's because the speed changed. Potential energies depend on distances. They're interaction energies so they depend on how far apart things are in some way. Not just distances, actually angles can work too but some physical measurement. I mean, if you look at this thing, if I want, I can add energy to this thing by, by twisting it, even though its location hasn't changed, I've changed the angles of a bunch of bonds by twisting it. And you can see that one end of it's like this and the other end's like that. And so I can add energy to things in ways that aren't just changing distance but also changing angles. Almost always we will be talking about distances. <laughs> but, but you know something about angles. You know that a water molecule has an angle that's something like this. So if the angle, if you wanted to change that angle, you would have to add energy to it. If you want to bend that water molecule so that it's linear, you're going to have to add energy to it because it wants to be the lower energy. So if you're going to try to jam those two hydrogen atoms together, hydrogen ions together, uh, then again you're going to have to add energy to it and that would be just changing an angle. The distance between the Earth and this ball is the important thing for the interaction between the Earth and this ball. If this ball is 10 million miles away, the Earth, inter the earth ball interaction is negligible. If this ball is close to the Earth, then it'll start to have a significant interaction with the Earth. If it's closer, its interaction will change. And so, 
the height of the object, the height of this thing, tells us about how close it is to the Earth. And so the height of the object starts to be the thing that we want to worry about when we're talking about the interaction between the Earth, the gravitational interaction between the Earth and the ball. When this thing is low, when this thing goes up higher and higher, it has a higher gravitational potential energy. Just because it's higher. Not because it moved over here to the left, but just because it's higher than it was down here at the bottom. It's higher by about that much. Energy conservation. <laughs> when we talk about energy conservation, or energy being conserved, what we mean is that the total energy of the universe does not change. If I add it all up, the universe as a whole is a closed system. If I have an open system, then the total energy, all the energies added together of that open physical system can change, but it can only change by the amount of energy I've added or taken out. It can't change spontaneously without interactions with something else. So what does total energy mean? Well, it means, it means add everything together. It means add all the internal energies together plus the, ener the kinetic energy of this whole thing moving plus the gravitational potential energy of this thing interacting with the Earth. Total energy means add all of those together. I'm assuming, by the way, uh, when I say the energy of this, I'm going to take the physical system to be this thing plus the Earth. Once I've included the Earth, then that interaction energy is, is, makes it a closed system. It's an energy inside the system. If I have this thing right here, and I don't include the Earth as part of my system, then what the Earth is doing is reaching out from a distance and slowing it down and stopping it. So, the Earth, so this ball would be considered an open system with interacting with the Earth and energy being transferred that way. Um, let's say you have like a slingshot and you have a rock, right? Okay. And you're holding the slingshot back. Is that considered a spring potential energy? Or, because you're talking about distances, that's not, is that gravitational or no? That's a spring potential energy. If you stretch, so, uh, uh, we will always take as a model of chemical bonds, we'll always take a spring kind of a model. It works really well. It's not perfect. There's, there are weird situations where it's not so good, but basically it works really well. And so what happens when you stretch a slingshot? Well, you're, you're stretching rubber tubing. Right? So, so all of the chemical bonds are being pulled apart or some set of them are being pulled apart. Or something that is all, some polymer that's all wound up is getting straightened out. But chemical bonds are getting changed. And so it, it is just like spring potential energy. You can consider a rubber, piece of rubber tubing a spring. In fact, when I compress this thing. You can consider that spring potential energy because when I let go it comes back again. It's just like a spring. Spring is just something that changes its shape and, and can come back again on its own. Um, So total energy just means add up all the energies in your physical system. If it's a closed system, this total energy doesn't change, which means that the final energy is equal to the initial energy. That's one way of stating energy conservation for a closed system. The final energy, the final total energy is the same as the initial total energy. The, or change in energy is of course final minus initial since those two are the same. Another way of saying it is the total energy did not change. Delta E is zero. Total energy didn't change is another way of saying we have a closed system and energy is conserved. You've already seen this and in fact 
the reason I want to write total energy is the sum of all these things is that I, I, I don't want to make this sound like a dare, but almost any energy that you're, that's in this long list of energies that we have to add together can be changed into almost any other energy. You can almost always find a physical system or a situation where one of those energies changes into any of the others. You probably know what happens if I lower my nuclear energy. If I lower my nuclear energy, that energy goes somewhere. A common thing to happen is what? What would, if, in a, if there's a nuclear reaction going on and the nuclear energy is going down, what energy we, might you expect to be going up? What happens in a nuclear reactor? <laughs> thermal energy is going up. Thermal energy is a common one. It's not the only one because particles come flying out and they run into you and they uh, change your DNA around and eventually cause cancer and kill you. Um, but and, and so, uh, so those, you know, those changes, obviously they changed chemical, the, the nuclear energy went down and some chemical bond energy went up. But, but there's a lot of, almost any energies that you can think of, you can think of a physical situation that transfers things between them. You can take thermal energy and turn it into kinetic energy. You do that every single day in your car. Your, the, the gasoline and the air catch fire, because there's a spark plug, uh, suddenly there's a lot of hot gas, high thermal energy, and what happens? Well, there's a tricky, a lot of little mechanism and stuff, and suddenly your car shoots down the road. Your car picks up kinetic energy simply because there was a lot of thermal energy inside pistons in the car. And so those energy transfers, and so what I want you to do is <coughs> Try not to get into a rut of thinking that one energy transfer causes only one other kind of energy transfer. Because almost any energy, almost any energy change can cause a different, uh, another energy change of almost any type. I can change thermal energy and, uh, sorry, nuclear energy and that can cause bond energy to change or thermal energy to change. or kinetic energy to change. A nuclear powered submarine is not moving. Suddenly it's moving. Where did that energy come from? The kinetic energy of motion. It came from nuclear bond energies. So all of these are possible and, and I just want to, in, in listing them all, I just want to leave all possibilities open to you. And we'll talk about a lot of them. Open system the only difference is now energy can be transferred in or out and so the change in the total energy is equal to the energy transfers. If the energy of uh, the total energy of some physical system goes down then delta E is a negative number. If it went down that would be because energy was transferred out and so we call this Q the heat we use a negative number if heat was transferred out, negative number for Q, and a positive number for Q if heat was transferred in. We use a negative number for the work, W, if heat was transferred out, and a positive number for the work, W, if heat was transferred in. That's what this equation tells you you should do, the way we've written it. If the total energy change is positive, then energy had to come in. If the left side is positive, then the right side has to be positive because that's an equation. Another special case here. Uh, suppose we add heat to something and there's no phase change. So we add heat to something like this bowling ball And I can add heat to something by putting my hands on it. If I do it just like this, the height of the bowling ball doesn't change, so the gravitational potential energy didn't change. The kinetic energy didn't change, it's not moving faster, it's still just not moving. It didn't change phase, 
but the temperature went up. So the only energy change was a temperature change, which means by, by the logic we've used so far that it's the thermal energy that's changing. I added heat, the heat has to be equal to the change in the thermal energy in that particular situation. Just because no, no other energy was changing. Delta E, everything else was zero. Delta Ke was zero. So, I have a few questions to ask you. Yeah? When your body does work, like do you move? Is it changing chemical energy into what kind of energy? When, when you move, so, so the details of exactly how molecules move along little, uh, little strands in your muscles, something that I've heard about but don't really know about. But what happens is that there is bond energy going down because ADP, get, ATP gets translated, gets changed into ADP plus blah, blah, blah. So stronger bonds form, bond energy goes down, a molecule changes its shape. Just like this can change its shape. A molecule changes its shape and as molecule, this molecule changes its shape over and over again, it, that, that little is it myosin? Some little molecule crawls along a, a thing in your muscles and suddenly your muscles do that because a whole bunch of that is happening. Chemical bond energy that is, that is uh, stored in some sense in the ATP until it changes to other things, that chemical bond energy uh, shows up and, and causes me to be able to lift this thing up into the air and what happened? Gravitational potential energy went up. This thing got higher, my hand got higher, gravitational potential energy went up and chemical bond energy went down. And you can trace the details if you know the biology, which I don't, and you have to know it really, really well, the biology and the chemistry, to know exactly what happened. But in the intermediate range, there are a lot of things happening, like, like uh, molecules changing their shape. So, one kilogram block of iron, a hot block of iron, 500 Kelvin. Place it in an insulating container. So I have a container, I put a hot block of iron in there. On top of that, I put a really cold block of ice, half kilogram block of ice. Uh, really cold ice. So 200 Kelvin is, is somewhat colder than the ice that you take out of your freezer. It's certainly well below zero C. Zero C is 273 Kelvin. So 200 Kelvin is a really cold chunk of ice. The top is sealed shut so that nothing can escape. Those two things sitting on top of each other are in what's called thermal contact so they can exchange heat. You probably know that. They come to thermal equilibrium in about five minutes. Thermal equilibrium just means they finally are at the same temperatures. So my question is, what energies do you know for sure must have changed in this interaction? What energies are different at the beginning and at the end? The initial state is when I first put the hot thing and the cold thing in there and sealed it up. The final state, thermal equilibrium, five minutes later, what things do you absolutely know must have changed and are different at the beginning and the end of those five minutes.